Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. From the gun, it's Jackson. It's brought in here by Willie Sneed. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. Good work after the catch, going to net him 23 and a first. Jackson in the offense come up first and 10. And he's four for four now, throwing the ball to start the drive. Being chased out left. And it's intercepted at the goal line. Picked off by the rookie first rounder from Michigan, Devin Bush. And his guys have got it back at the closing stages of the first half. The Steelers take over first and ten at their own two-yard line. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. Likely time for just one final play, and then it'll be off to the locker room to talk about how they can erase this deficit. Yeah, and I think a lot of people look at it and go, well, maybe you take a shot here. Maybe you get some momentum going into the half. What's the flip side of that? You do something crazy, quarterback gets hit, ball comes free. And he's in for the touchdown on the final play of the first half. The prayer is answered. How did they get that done? But after that touchdown, we are just a PAT away from a tie game. And I know everyone's going to look at it and go, guess what? Tie game, all even, uh-uh. They just scored. If they kick this extra point and tie it, they're going to feel like they're the ones that are in control. Extra point put through by Boswell. And that will take us to the end of the first half of play. So thanks to the late touchdown, it's a tie ball game here heading to break. As we send you down to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach, set and ready to go for the second half. One touchdown apiece, 7-7 seven, seven our score. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. The Pittsburgh offense at the line to start their next drive. They have a chance to break our tie here as we get a look at the first drive of quarter three. And it's such a tone setter, isn't it? Because both sides trying to seize momentum to begin the half. What do they have dialed up that will give them an advantage to move the ball downfield? Let's find out what they have dialed up. So here's a first and ten at the 38. He's got the first down and more past midfield. And he's all the way down to the 13-yard line. It's a big play there for the Steelers. So they dig a little deeper in the playbook there, get the wide receiver the ball, running it, and it proves fruitful. Love the call. When you've got a guy who has running back skills, you want him to touch the ball as well, not just out wide where you throw it to him. Make sure you hand it to him or toss it to him and let him go to work. On first and ten is counter. And he's going to get about four down inside the ten to the nine. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. They stay on the ground. Here's Connor again. And only about a yard there as he takes it from the nine to the eight. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. A field goal would get him the lead, but that's not what they're shooting for as they come up on third down. And he's in. Touchdown, Steelers. Juju Smith-Schuster with his second TD of the game, his sixth on the year. And the Steelers have taken the lead.
Boswell for the extra point. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. This fielded at the two. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. And this game was all square at halftime, but now they find themselves down seven following the opening drive touchdown here in the third quarter. And they need to take a good, relaxing, deep breath, don't you think? Because right now they might start to feel like they've got to play catch up here and start matching them point for point. But it's still too early to get there. They can still run their offense. Plenty of time to get back in this game. From the 35 on second down, Jackson flushed out right. And now he's going to use his legs. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. Jackson always a threat to run. He's got the first down. He was the NFL's leading rusher among QBs a year ago. This is Ingram on first and 10. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage. It'll be back at the 36. That'll be a loss of four yards on the play. And it'll bring up a second and 14. And now Jackson will look to throw it. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. That'll be taken in there by Miles Boykin. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping him from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. Here's Sam Cook now as he's on to punt for Baltimore. He gets this away. It's a good one, drawing toward the sidelines. The field position game, such an overlooked facet, Charles, of an NFL game, but this offense, they're going to be pinned back. What an ideal punt. An ideal punt, and it leads to that term complimentary football because them doing that, puts their defense in a great spot, doesn't it? Gives them a chance. If they want to be aggressive, try and maybe get a safety out of this whole thing, it puts them in that position. They start the drive with Connor. And he's brought down, but not before they get it across the 20-yard line. A gain of 10, good for a Steeler first down. And that's the big fella's M.O. right there. Running through tackles, keeping the sticks moving forward. This defense, if you don't bring 11 guys to the ball to try and get him on the ground, he's going to keep making runs like that. I feel the press box shaking every time he touches the rock. Snickers, 66. Middle. Throwing now, Roethlisberger on first down. He'll get that one complete to Connor. And he gets it here to right around the 24 before he's out of bounds. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. And that one covered beautifully. Their defenders stayed home, and they'll stop him behind the line. It's a loss of two, now third down. The Ravens bring out an extra defensive back here on third. Play fake to Connor. Now Roethlisberger, nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Jalen Ferguson in there to drop him, and that will go in the books as the first sack of his young NFL career. Congratulations, young man. He was only asked to punt once in the victory last week as he sends this one away. 
Just a 25-yard punt, not what he was hoping for by any stretch. And the Ravens set up well to begin their drive as it'll begin in enemy territory already. By the way, they're into the second half now in Philadelphia on the NFL scoreboard. Now you saw the score at the bottom of your screen a moment ago. We got a good one going on there. And we'll keep an eye on that one as our game goes along here. They'll throw on first down with Jackson. And that is incomplete. Tried to get it to Willie Sneed there. And that'll bring up second down. They tried to make something happen, but that one came up incomplete and really wasn't a good-looking throw. Yeah, maybe even go as far as to call that a little ill-advised. Yeah, I would say so. I think that's the right phrase for it. Definitely ill-advised. Just wonder about his mechanics right now, you know, and that's the tough part. You do so much stuff in practice to make it repetitive, but it has to repeat under pressure, whether it's pressure from the defense or just the pressure of playing the game. And this will probably be the last play of the quarter. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. And that'll do it for the end of the second quarter. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. From the gun on third down, Jackson. He wants it all for the end zone. As his guys are in for six, as they can now even this game here in the fourth quarter with the extra point. Now Tucker to add the PAT. And an important one that is as we are tied now early in this fourth quarter. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. This will be taken in at the one. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. The Steelers take over first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Now a pass that's taken in by Smith-Schuster. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. 12 yards that time at a Pittsburgh first. Some good games going on in the early window. This might be the best of the bunch. They'll run on first down. It's Connor. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. On second down and four, Roethlisberger. Ebron with it over the middle. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Here we go, here we go. Take both of them. Black 20. First and 10. 77, 77. These two. Shift, shift. They'll throw on first down with Roethlisberger. That'll be taken in there by James Washington. And he's going to take it in for a Steeler touchdown. James Washington, his second touchdown on the season. And they are able to break the tie and move out in front here in this fourth quarter.
Extra point now by Boswell. It's up and good, and that'll make the score 21-14. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, hey, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked. But you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. When we see those runs to the perimeter, when we see those runs to the edge, we think about big breakers, don't we? In this case, it was a modest game, but it does open up possibilities here on second down. The tally there, minus two yards, brings up third down. Seems pretty obvious defensively a key was stopping the run game. How have they done it so successfully? To me, it seems that these guys really did a nice job of paying attention during the scouting report meeting. And you know, Brandon, when they do those, they talk about the top plays that these guys like to run. The best runs for the top running back, those are the ones you focus on and want to take away. And they've done that pretty successfully in this game. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. Pretty lucky to get the football back. Had his target out there waving the arms, saying, I'm open, but maybe you didn't see him quick enough. And I know the jokes are always about defensive backs' hands. What really actually happens, you don't get many opportunities. You get over-anxious, and you start to think about taking it away and going the other way instead of focusing and catching the ball. On is the putter, Cook, who sends it away. Pulled in at the 24. Nice job bringing that one back. 14 on the return. And the Steelers will go on offense here. First and 10. The Pittsburgh offense at the line to start their next drive. Right now clinging to a one-score lead, Charles, and I think operating within that four-minute offense with a little less than four minutes to go applies here, right? It certainly does, and that means the playbook is still wide open. But you are a little bit more careful about what you're calling. You want plays that are going to gain yardage, how would you say it, consistently, mm -hmm. right? You don't need the big shots downfield, but make sure the clock continues to run. Pile up the first downs, and the goal end the game with your quarterback kneeling down at the end and you still have the lead clock continuing to run they'll probably wind this all the way before snapping it on second down a nice job there as he rumbles for nine and it'll be back to a third and three Anytime the offense shows what they call a shot play or a chunk play where they're trying to get big yardage, sometimes people just call it gadget plays, and you hold it to a gain that we just saw there, you feel pretty good about yourself as a defense.
fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. Yeah, baby! Yeah! So the Steelers with the football as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. They'll try and run for it with counter. Boom here to run. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. A big chunk of yardage there, 37 yards. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. Right back to Connor here on first. And he's going to take it in for a Steeler touchdown. James Conner, his sixth touchdown of the season. And the Steelers, they broaden their lead. Well, it'd be real easy to say that they are firmly in control right now, but I'm looking at your face and I'm thinking I've got to be careful with that. Well, it's a two-score game. You're inside of two minutes. I think you can breathe relatively easily now. Yeah, you can, but still, you got to stay vigilant. You can't give up anything cheap and easy. That could put you in some jeopardy. Boswell good with the extra point. And the lead now up to 14. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket up. And Jackson cannot get away, and he'll go down. T.J. Watt in there to take him down, and the clock will roll. Chalk that up as their first sack in this game, and they tallied four a week ago. And... Probably not as much exultation in that sack as what took us so long. Because when you get four the previous week, you're counting on continuing that momentum. They didn't get that. He's got a man complete. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds left to go in the game. The big play has them all the way out near midfield for a first and ten. Jackson. That's pulled in by the rookie from Notre Dame, Miles Boykin. The completion good for three and a second down. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. From midfield now, here's Jackson. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. The Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts as they stop it here with just under 40 seconds to go in the game.
from the red zone now. Here's Jackson on first down. And he takes this one into the end zone. And all of a sudden, here in the final minute, things get a little bit tighter. Tucker now to add the point after. He's got it, and they're back within a touchdown at 28-21. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And a fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. The Steelers take over first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. And this one all over but the shouting, you might say. Now, there's one timeout remaining defensively, but probably no real need to use it here. Yeah, the only time they would use it, strip it for five. A terrific running there to start the drive as that's going to go for 15 and a quick first down as well. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. on the pickup there and it'll be second down not much happening there on first down I thought there might have been a hole for a split second yeah but it dried up pretty quickly didn't it closed fast now the Steelers use the second of their three timeouts that'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play have to imagine this will be on the ground as well as they come up second and seven. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. And now here comes their final timeout as they take it with eight ticks remaining. for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And they were buoyed, Charles, by a big second half that put this one on ice. So you get the sense that whatever was said at halftime obviously hit home. I think it's a little bit more than that, though. Obviously, there are words that are said, and hey, come on, guys, we have to play better. But sometimes it's just sharpening your execution, sharpening your focus, and maybe doing the things you practiced all week without major adjustments, just doing them better. And that got it done in this one. So for Pittsburgh, their strong September has carried over to October as they move to 5-0. And they will hit the road next week to take on the L.A. Chargers. Meanwhile, for Baltimore, the loss will move them back to 3-2 on the year. And they'll get a chance to redeem themselves at home next week. And for Charles Davis and our entire crew here at EA Sports, I'm Brandon Gordon saying so long, everybody.
All right, we ready? Huh? Oh, yeah. I lost by a touchdown. He trashed, though, bro. He run like a fucking college-style offense. He, 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 The only reason he beat me is because he scored on a fucking uh, wild twice that he ran back-to-back. And what's crazy is they told they 